everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I get to talk to the director of the ACA, the Arlington Center for the Arts, Tom Formicola, for this Talk of the Town ACA update. Tom, always a pleasure to Hello, welcome James. you to the studio. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Um, you come solo today for the first time in yep. a while. And uh, we'll try not to be too hard on Everybody you. Everybody else is too busy to join me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a super busy uh, time of the year. It always is with the ACA. And I know, though, that you're looking at camp next week. Uh, April because camp already. Absolutely, yeah, just like that. And we'll be in summer before we know it. But that's part of what we'll be talking about Great. today. So we always like to use these conversations, obviously, to, um, you know, actually, sometimes we revisit things that have happened since we last spoke to you. And if that should that come up, we, we will be happy to hear. Uh, but most often we're looking forward. We are wanting to let people know what's going on uh, specifically at the ACA and specifically probably over the next two or three months or so. So that's what we'll do today. And it's easy to know where to start because uh, the ACA has a major event coming up uh, at the end of this month. I'd like you to start there, if you don't mind. Just about two weeks away. Mm -hmm. uh, mark your calendars. Uh, Saturday, April 29th, right. from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., we'll be presenting our new fundraiser called Spotlight ACA uh, for folks who loved the Blue Jean Ball. Mm -hmm. It has all of the great components that were part of the Blue Jean Ball and more. Mm -hmm. um, and you can wear your tux. And, and I'm going to actually go the opposite way because people are like, oh, but I loved wearing my no, blue right, jeans. Right. You could still wear your, your blue, blue jeans. jeans. We okay, encourage you to. Enough. And there will still be lots of music and lots of dancing. In fact, we'll have three bands uh, with us that night. Um, Made in the Shade Trio is going to be playing folks in as they arrive that evening. And we'll have um, uh, a jug band playing uh, as uh, on, on the first floor to get people sort of warmed up and and uh, and ready to ready to go, ready to party. Uh -huh. And then uh, and then later in the evening, uh, Tall Mall, which is a very popular porch fest band, will sort of close out the night with a really fun set that includes um, like everything from Bollywood to ABBA, and that, and everything in between that you can wow. imagine. Well. That sounds like fun, but it also, in addition to that, it sounds like a lot of fun. But I love the choice in a lot of ways of the music as well, uh, because certainly the last two that you mentioned are so kind of interwoven with the ACA already. You know, you were, you were here talking with uh, a guest about jug bands and jug band music not that long ago. Porch Fest is yeah. obviously another thing we'll talk about today and something that is huge in town and huge for the ACA. What a wonderful kind of confluence. So, you know, it's funny that you should use that word interwoven because that's exactly what we tried to sort of incorporate with this new fundraiser is to try to give folks like a little taste of all of the things that we do all year long. Um, you know, you mentioned the jug band. Um, uh, the, it's the, it's all, and Tal is a Porch Fest band. Um, we're going to have uh, several artists that are going to be doing demos. We're going to have a ceramics demo up in the ceramics studio. Somebody will do, be doing paper weaving. Somebody else is going to be doing embroidery. We're going to have a fun interactive activity that will sort of um, conjure up a feeling of uh, a camp. People have access to a new exhibit. We'll talk more about that in a minute uh, in our gallery. So like the whole night is sort of dedicated to giving people just sort of a little taste of all, uh, all the wonderful things that ACA provides the community throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, just about like a, a kind of celebration slash open house, you know, where you're really inviting people. Because again, that's also different from Blue, Blue Jean Ball, as you've said. In the past, the Blue Jean Ball has been held quite often at uh, in Town Hall mm -hmm. in the auditorium, which is, as we know, a magnificent space for such things. Uh, but this is this means that, you know, by placing this event right in uh, your facility, yep. you're gonna. People will be able again to explore all the facets of yep. what you do yep. in a single evening. So technically, it's in the Arlington Community Center. There you go. Sorry about that. And, but. and the funny thing is, is their address is 27 Maple Street, and the Arlington Center for the Arts' address is 20 Academy Street. But guess what? It's, it's the, the same, same building. building. Uh, and so it is. It is great to be like at home and doing that event. And we get to do that because of the you know, the generosity of the town and our great neighbors in that building, including the Council on the Aging and the, and the Health Department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's talk for a second about 
just the importance of this. I mean, obviously we've talked about how nice it will be to be there and how proud you are of the kind of components that you've already put together without taking anything away from that. I think I'd also just want to remind people uh, that this is hugely uh, impactful for the community yeah. as well, right? Because I remember the fundraising efforts that happened years ago when there, the move to this new space needed to happen and how the town responded at that point. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, well, we're, we're hoping to raise $30,000 through this event. And, and it is, I mean, it's built to be a fun social event, but it is also meant to like sort of remind folks that we're a not-for-profit organization and um, we survive because of the generosity and the kindness of community members who participate in, in that whole range of programs, including Porch Fest, uh, or who take classes with us, or who will drop it and see an exhibit. And this is just sort of a gentle reminder to them that we want them to celebrate us, but we also want them to remember that like supporting us is important as well, because the work that we do isn't possible without, um, without, you know, without their engagement and without their support. Yeah, and I mean, it's a different thing, right, to, to kind of um, come together around, a, a, it wasn't an emergency exactly, but it wasn't by, you know, it wasn't right. a choice uh, that meant moving from what is now the Gibbs School to, uh, to this new space. And it's, again, one thing for the community to recognize, oh my goodness, this is, this is an important moment right. for us to reach into our pockets, et cetera. But as you're saying, I mean, your, your work goes on every week of every year, yeah. and in order to do that, this yeah. needs to, the, the money needs to keep funneling yeah. in. Yeah, I'm happy to say this isn't an emergency moment. We're, we're doing well. Um, like, we're, you know, we've come out of COVID stronger than we went into it, I think, in many ways. And, uh, and we're growing, and, um, and we're trying to serve more people, and we're trying to serve them in better ways. Like, we're always trying to improve our programs and deepen the experiences that people have, and uh, in order for us to do that, you know, it, it takes a staff, it takes great teachers, you know, uh, we rent a building, um, you know, there are expenses associated mm -hmm, with that, mm -hmm. and um, and it's it's not enough to replicate that year after year. At the end of every year, we we look back at what we did and we think, oh, you know, we could do that better if we had some more resources. Mm -hmm. So this is about you know growth. All right, so let us just, before we move on to other topics, let's just remind folks one more time. Saturday, April 29th from 7 to 10 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. You can get them on our website. Uh, and, um, and it's going to be a fun night. Like, it's, it's going to be a really fun night. Wear your blue jeans. Bring your dancing <laughs> shoes. Excellent. Okay, we have some other stuff to talk about, too. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's take the rest of it maybe chronologically okay. or something. I know that there's a new exhibit opening also yeah. around the same time at the end of this month. So we're installing it right now, and it's called Reunion, 10 Iranian Artists 10 Years Later. Uh, we have uh, an instructor uh, who works regularly with us. Her name is uh, Bahare uh, Safarani. And with her sister, together, the Safarani sisters, are curating this show. Uh, they are both um, from uh, Iran. They went to the University of Tehran. And um, they studied art there. And they have assembled a show that is essentially showcasing the work of their colleagues. And uh, they all graduated 10 years ago. And it's a, it's a beautiful show with a beautiful range of work, mostly painting and drawing. And um, it's, you know, one of the things that's really striking about it is that it's so different from the show that we just took down, mm -hmm. which was a, a fiber arts show, it was, which was very colorful and very playful, and this is more um, thoughtful and contemplative and, um, and provocative, and, uh, and, and the works make you stop. They, they stop you in your tracks, uh, and you really want to sort of get inside those images and, and understand them better. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful work. It opens on Thursday the 27th of April, mm -hmm. so two days before our exhibit, and uh, the folks that come to our fundraiser will be among the first folks to actually get a sneak peek at, mm -hmm. uh, at that exhibit. So we're, we're really excited about it. I do like the fact that you brought up that contrast between the fiber arts, uh, you know, exhibit that just c closed and this one that will be opening, because I do think that, again, it reminds folks of the range of 
excellent art experiences yeah. that are possible within your building. There are other galleries in town, but most of those are very kind of topic specific or subject specific. Yeah. And yours, you kind of run the gamut. You said we might take a look backwards, and I'll go backwards for a minute. So we just closed that exhibit um, like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. And uh, we have, in the time that we've been in this building, and the time that I've been at the ACA, which is going on four years, believe it or wow. not, um, I've never seen this kind of response to an exhibit before. Like there were, there were tens of people coming in every day, and and that's unusual. You know, we're on the third floor of a building that's kind of off the main track. Mm -hmm. You got to know. You yeah. got to be getting there on purpose. But yeah. Word was out, and and people were coming, and they were coming back and bringing friends, and um, and we did some really interesting um, programming with that art as a, a backdrop. It, you know, I think the the thing about this fiber arts show it was called Labor of Life was that the work that was on display was sort of unexpected. I don't think the show looked like anything that mm. anybody imagined it would look like. The the works were really creative and really interesting, and. Um, and we did a fun fishbowl discussion uh, with the artists. Uh, uh, nine of the artists from that show sort of sat in a circle, and the audience sat in circles so around, around them. them. And they had a conversation. And I remember when somebody suggested, when someone proposed to me the idea that that's what we're going to do, I thought, oh, come on, that's never going to work. Nine people are going to talk? It was beautiful. Oh, wow. And it was so great to hear, like, um, these artists not only share information about their own work, but to ask each other questions about like their technique and their process and their inspiration. Um, it I'll was bet lovely. they had a really good time too. They, the nine of them. I think that they really did. And um, and we also a few nights after that. Um, uh, there's a new poet laureate in town. Mm -hmm. I imagine you've talked to not yet, Kate, not yet. Okay, we um, will be Jean Flanagan, uh, who incidentally is one of the founders of the ACA. But um, she assembled uh, the Alwife poets to come, and they created uh, and presented an evening of poetry, uh, and the readings were inspired by mm. the the work on the walls. And they mm -hmm. came and they spent time with that work, and then they did a beautiful reading. And again, we had it's a small space. But even so, we had a sold out crowd on a Monday night, on a rainy Monday night for so, that poetry reading. I'm really proud of that. Yeah. So, you know, again, as if we needed any more proof, this is a good, this is a good time right yes, now at yes, the ACA. This is. is a rich and, and, and fertile better. time. Yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so speaking, well, you know, continuing, I think, with the theme. Um, Teen artists on the issues is something that you've done before and we've talked about before, but I understand there's a new program yep. this year. This is our third year, and that program changes every year. We haven't to date like um, uh, just run with one discipline. We've decided every year to shake it up mm -hmm, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with an excellent artist. His name is Gustavo Barceloni. He teaches regularly in our program. We knew that we wanted to do this with him in particular. Uh, he's a super talented um, ceramics artist, and he's a really thoughtful guy, and he's an activist himself. And um, he's really interested in social justice issues, and he just jumped at the chance to work with local teenagers. And, uh, and he, so we're doing a program on ceramics and social justice, uh, which strikes everybody's ear as a little funny, what? because everyone is like, what? Mm -hmm. And he is looking both at functional works and at um, symbolic works, representational works. And so I'm, I can't wait to see what comes out of the conversations that they're having and the collaborations that are happening in that classroom. Um, but there's a lot of talk about social justice and issues and, um, and the issues that, that these young people care about. And then there's talk about how they can engage community members in conversation about those issues. You know, I, I don't know that they're gonna do any of these things in mm -hmm, particular, but mm -hmm. like, you know, one example is like, you know, a soup bowl is meant to nourish people. Yeah. And um, and so there's a sort of a represent representational, you know, aspect to that. By the same token, it's, you know, it's very functional. It's right. But there's also, you know, um, sculptures. We're going to be doing, I don't have the date in my head, but in the middle of June, we're going to, we're going to do a public um conversation with the teenagers and show their work and it's going to be at the Robbins Library so people who are interested in that should take and everyone should be interested in that <laughs> uh, uh, should take a look on our website and see when that's going to be but it'll be around the middle of June and these are like really like sharp young people and and Gustavo is so good and they're working so well together and I, I think they're just going to create something that's going to fascinate all of us yeah you know uh, my 
My experience here at ACMI and in other ways of dealing with youth in Arlington, it, they, they are, there are a lot of impressive young kids and their commitment to social issues and issues of great societal impact are, is, it, it's clear, I think most people understand what I'm talking yeah. about. If you're, ta if you're interacting with teenagers, you know that they care yeah. about their world yeah. and about the threats to it, about the things to celebrate, about the inequities therein, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea that you would be kind of empower, or this, this program is gonna be empowering them to Extra, to, to, to let their voices be heard in a different in different media yeah. or in a di well different media over right. time some and certainly in a different some of them have experience with ceramics some of them don't have experience right. in ceramics some of them come to this because of their strong interest in ceramics some of them come to this because of their strong oh, interest so in social justice so i would also be remiss if i didn't mention that we're this is the third year that we've done a program like this and we offer this program for free and it's an intensive program and it's it it plays out over uh, 10 weeks. And you know what's really important for us to, to lower the barriers or the obstacles to participation um, in a program like this. And so you know, we, we, we want people to participate. Also, uh, this is um, by application. And we had more, this was the first year where we actually had more applications than students. students that we could serve, yeah. which is, um, exciting and sad simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Right, of course, it's a mark of success, obviously, in a lot of ways, but also you never, you don't want to say no to anybody, especially around something like this. Mm -hmm. Last thing I'll say about that is that I really like the model that you've got there very much. Again, as a former teacher, uh, I just like the idea that what you're doing is offering access to everybody, at least potentially, mm -hmm. right, but also uh, expecting a commitment, which yeah. is a serious commitment yeah. on their part. And yeah. if they can do their part, you're happy to do your part. Yeah. I like that arrangement. In case any of those teens are watching, I should say this out loud as well. The applications were all great, without exception. I mean, we actually asked the kids to talk about the social uh, issues that they're interested in and why they think art is important. And we got amazing answers to those questions. And we had intended to like all sit down as a group and go through those applications and say this one, but not that one, and that one, but not this one. We couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so we literally just threw all the names into a hat. Oh, and, and it was a, yeah. kind of almost a lottery? Yeah, yeah, because there, there, right, was, there, were no, there right. was no qualitative way to do it. Mm -hmm. They were all fabulous. There's, there, if, if we had room for all of them, we would have loved to serve all of them. But it's a ceramic studio, and unfortunately, like it just doesn't expand easily. <laughs> that's right. Well, I'm glad that you had, a, uh, you know, had an opportunity to mention that as well, because that's super important, and hopefully, some or all of those kids are, are going to tune into this. Um, okay, a couple more things to talk about. Uh, one that um, for sure is already on everybody's radar, um, and that is Porch Fest, of course, mm -hmm. because who doesn't love Porch Fest, it's right? True. So. Uh, Saturday, June 17th. Mark your calendars. We have the date. If it rains, it'll be Sunday, June 18th, but it's not going to rain. <laughs> um, registration opened about a month ago, and we already have a lot of folks registered as porches, and we have a lot of folks registered as bands. So if you're thinking about it, that's an important thing to think about. Everyone is invited to participate in Porch Fest, and, uh, and we, you know, think of that word band you know, sort of very liberally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, somebody called the other day because they wanted to present a group of dancers. Great, go for it. Uh, we have visual artists that want to like bring a group together and display visual art. Terrific, sounds fabulous. Right. So it doesn't, strictly speaking, it doesn't have to be music. But, you know, I always say to everybody that they need to think about the the registration system we have is sort of a kind of dating system. Like, you know, porches can register and bands can register, and then their job is to... To match. Right, and it's their job to match. Like, you know, people are always surprised to learn that we don't curate Porch Fest. Mm -hmm. We don't choose the stages. We don't choose the bands. Like, this is very much a community-built, mm -hmm. you know, event. And, and we trust the community to make the choices that, like, suit them best. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, you know, we're off to a grand start. We had an info session. Lots of folks showed up with great questions. We had 8,000 people last year, um, and we seem to be tracking at a like, more enthusiastic rate than we did last <laughs> year. So, like, it could be big. Um, it'll be from 12 until 6 p.m. Um, 
we as the Arlington Center for the Arts is the facilitator of uh, Porch Fest. We're the presenter, and and we try to think carefully uh, uh, about just setting down some ground rules that make it easy for people to participate and understand what their roles are and understand the importance of their roles as porches and bands and audience members. And one of the things that we talk a lot about is the importance of being a good neighbor. Mm. And so um, we have two zones, an east zone and a west zone. Uh, west of Town Hall is activated from uh, 12 p.m. until 4 p.m. East of Town Hall is, uh, is activated from 2 p.m. To, to 6, 6 p.m., uh -huh. right, and then so there's a two-hour overlap in the middle, and, you know, that's by design because we don't want to, I know you started out with everybody loves Porch Fest, but there are a few folks out there <laughs> that's not their thing, and that's okay. Yeah, good point, um, good point. You know, I'm sure they have other interests, and that's just fine. Good point. But, like, you know, it's, it's important to us. Like, this is a community building event, and so I think everybody agrees that, like, everybody loves community celebration. And so we just try to say, you know, be respectful, tell your neighbors what's going on, like no surprises. If somebody asks you to turn it down a little bit, turn it down a little bit, you know, just if, if there's another band playing right. nearby, make sure that you're not competing with one another. Yeah. And, and like just enjoy what's going to be a beautiful sunny warm day. <laughs> um, and I, I, I really like, I don't know if this is happening in other communities as well, it probably is, but I love what you said at the outset about the fact that you're being very kind of flexible in how you see these performances and that you are in, gonna be inclined to say yes rather than no and try and figure out just, you know, how, how or let folks figure out how well, the, you know, how that will work mm -hmm. best. Um, but I love that attitude in general, the attitude of saying yes, it's very ACMI as well. Um, and the fact that it is expansive enough, it's a, truly a community celebration. And of course, it's, it has its roots in and is, it, and is largely a music event as well. Mm -hmm. But there are, that, you know, there's all kinds right. of possibilities. There's no reason to like limit it. Yeah, no, I think that that sounds great. Um, okay, I think we've got one last thing that we should at least touch on. Uh, you know, I remember you giving the date for Porch Fest months ago because it's something that people do put on their calendars for, you know, way early. Uh, this is something else that we've also talked about before because it's just such a big part of what ACA does every year, mm -hmm. and that is summer camp, yeah. which, you know, I know we're not yet at April break very shortly, but summer will be here, as yep. we all know. So in we no have our time. dress rehearsal next week with April Camp. Is that right? And then on oh, June, right, of course. Right? And of then course, on June 26th, we jump in for 10 weeks of camp. It'll run through September 1st this year. Uh, as you know, it's a thematic camp. We serve, uh, you know, kids from um, uh, ages five, essentially, to high school age students as well. And uh, registration opened in January, and wow, the response was like daunting. Um, our system actually <laughs> broke down for a few minutes because wow. 300 people were trying to register at once. What? Is, this, is this a Taylor Swift concert? Uh, yeah, yes, we were making that joke as well. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of enthusiasm for this program. There's also a lot of need for this program. I mean, people really count on us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, for the summer to make sure that their um, kids are having, like, just really good quality summer, fun, creative experiences. And we take that. Uh, mm -hmm. Seriously, so we'll have 10 full weeks of really great programming, both in our space at Arlington Center for the Arts and at St. Paul's, where we've been operating for many years uh, as well over on Route 2. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, lots of great teachers in the mix. You know, Harry Potter week is back. It's always like a really popular week. We're like exploring, you know, underwater creatures and, you know, the worlds of the future and <laughs> outer space and you know every every week is different than the week before yep yep well it is as i said it's 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 a lock on a lot of people's calendars and uh as you say it's both exciting time but also a real kind of service to families here in Arlington who want to, to give, you know, make sure their kids have really excellent and fulfilling experiences and also want to know that they're taken care of. Right. Right. And, and taken care of well. And I remember going back some years now uh, talking to you about how you were setting summer camp up during COVID. Mm 
mm. and how you were trying and or and just as as we were edging our way yeah. out and stuff like that and the fact that it's summer and you can be outside so you can do some more stuff than otherwise but you have to be really and you were so thoughtful and meticulous and yeah. careful about all the different components that would reassure yep. parents in the community that you're really doing this right. Yeah. Um, it must be kind of nice not to have to worry about some of those right. extra we're constraints. Worried, we're still worried about it a but little bit still, because COVID's but there, still but, in the picture and right. we do still have some COVID you know, policies because mm -hmm. we want to we keep our camp community healthy and we want to be able to continue to run our camp program and so but it's it's not it's not like it was mm -hmm. yeah I mean we have a lot more room to navigate uh, which is great and I have to like say even though there's no staff sitting on either side of me like you know I couldn't do this without like the amazing staff that works at the ACA like really thoughtful people who never stop asking questions and are really comfortable challenging one another which is one of like my favorite things about working with like this team is like you know I will just sometimes you this might surprise you but I have a way of just <laughs> asserting things and um, and my staff will just say mm, I don't know about that and I have to tell you I love that I love that the conversation is always ongoing I love that people feel comfortable asking questions and challenging an idea Right, because it, it makes us better and stronger. Well, that, in the you end. know, and I have to say that kind of culture does come from the top down. So I'm glad well, to hear you. that. I mean, it really does, and it's really good because it allows it allows and encourages people to be adults yeah. and to be able to disagree with each other respectfully and figure out with the understanding that you're going to figure out how to do this best yeah. through that. Yeah. And you know that that's true in every context. Yes, and I learn from my staff every day. They. They manage up really well. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting better and better, say your staff, so good. All right, well, Tom, anything that we've missed? We've got a minute left. Don't have any details yet, but there's going to be a jug band festival in the fall. Surprise! Probably, All right, that's great. Probably late September, early October. Seems like everything. Every time you start something new, oh, it catches, yeah. and then you're gonna, you, you know, you get to do it some more yeah. after that. Somebody so said good. to me the other day, "When does like summer camp planning start?" And I said, "Well." I used to say the day after the camp ends, summer camp ends. Mm -hmm. But actually, in the last years, it's actually started a couple of weeks before right. that even. So it's, it's you know, it's you're always looking at the next six months. Right. So maybe in the next ACA update, we talk about 2025 or Excellent. something like that. We'll I see. might be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have been speaking and obviously enjoying myself with Tom Formicola. He is the executive director at the Arlington Center for the Arts. This has been Talk of the Town, an ACA update. We appreciate Tom's time. He's a busy guy. Uh, and we appreciate yours as well. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.